Today I got questioned about why I downloaded the entire Wikipedia site. I told them, if they just listen, I could explain everything. Welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. Today we're going to watch how we could build a moon base today. Space colonization number one. Now this one's pretty exciting for me because I love space travel. I love... Uh, we landed on the moon. I love the fact that we left like reflectors and stuff up there so that way we could, you know, actually do tests and measure the distance and, and let amateur astronomers kind of do their thing. And it is so amazing that we've set foot on another celestial body that a person has gotten in a spaceship, multiple people, and flew to the moon, gotten out, and then came back. It's incredible humans dream about leaving earth and traveling through the galaxy wouldn't that be so cool born too early to be part of it or were we maybe not the reality is we could begin our dream by building a moon base today oh let's do it come on do have the technology i want my tax dollars to go there nasa and the private sector say it could be done for 20 to 40 billion dollars spread out over about a decade that's less than twitter cost to the international space station or the budget surplus of Germany in 2017. Huh. Not that big an investment, really. The payoff would be a measure- Wow, Germany's good with their budgeting, huh? Sandbox to develop new technologies and exploit unlimited resources. It would start a new space race and lay the foundation for us to spread out into the solar system and beyond. I am all for this, by the way. Let's create a permanent space base on the moon. So, why aren't we doing it? Let's try and make it self-sufficient. It's hard to get governments interested in long-term investments in the future of humanity. Let's imagine... That's very true. As a species, we seem to be very short-term in our thoughts. We don't really put all that much effort into the long term or the super long term or the far future. We seem to be pretty focused on right here, right now, what's best for us. And we'll push the problem to our kids <laughs> and their kids and so on and so forth. And that's why we're in a lot of the pickles that we're in today. But if you look at it from a species survival perspective, a moon base Especially if we can somehow make it self-sufficient, which I don't know if that's necessarily possible or not. But I have a feeling we're going to find out. But if we could make it self-sufficient, could ensure the future of our species, even if we mess it up here on Earth. Even if we have one or two crazy world leaders that decide to press buttons that they shouldn't. Humanity would survive. If we start today, how would we build a moon base? Seriously, take my money. Throughout history, Let's do it. Colonization happened in phases. In the first phase of the age of exploration of the New World, for example, European monarchs funded expeditions to chart and discover and to stake their claims. They planted a flag and set up a camp, but they didn't stay. Yep. In the second phase, small missions set up outposts and settlements were founded, mm -hmm. which were still very dependent on their home countries for supplies. Some failed, but others survived and established a permanent presence. Only then, in the third phase, did a true colony form. Yeah. Tradesmen and laborers could emigrate. Come on, we can do it. I know we can do it. Their families sending extreme wealth back to their countries of origin. Mm hmm. When we colonize the moon, we'll go through the same three phases. This time, without murdering billions of innocent people in the process. That is one benefit. If there's no one there to murder, we're not going to murder them. A moon day lasts 29 Earth days, with a difference of nearly 300 degrees Celsius between sunlight and shade. Oh, wow. There's no atmosphere to shield us from meteorites, big and small, or cosmic radiation. Worse still, the lunar surface is covered in a layer of nasty, jagged dust. The moon is hard, mm -hmm. but we're good at doing hard things. In the first phase of lunar colonization, our explorers proved it can be done, that a new world can be reached. Yep, been there, done that. Started 60 years ago with the Apollo missions. By the way, if you Since haven't then, seen that photograph the America, that they took of the Earth, from the space station it's so i mean there's probably more than one of them 
But I mean, it, it's so amazing. You have to check it out. It is just awe-inspiring and beautiful to see the Earth from the moon's surface. We're pretty amazing. Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have mapped the moon, while rovers like the Chinese U-2 have studied the composition of the lunar surface, looking for water, ice, and metals. Phase 1 is more or less complete. We know what we need to know to mm -hmm. Phase 2. In the second phase, astronauts will build the first moon base, and this could begin today. The first small moon base could be completed in a decade. The first nation that establishes this base will be akin to the first nations building outposts in the new world 500 years ago. Yeah. It's expensive to send rockets to the moon, so we will send as little as possible. The base will be light, little more than inflatable habitats, mm -hmm. crews of no more than 12, and will be deployed somewhere with a natural shelter. Options that makes sense. You don't want to get hit by an actual meteorite. Or craters near the poles where the days are six months long. Ooh. These astronauts will not stay long. The habitat is likely to be abandoned between missions as solar panels cannot generate electricity during the lunar night. Oh, yeah. Work to enable humans to stay permanently. Our first crew will consist of scientists and engineers who will study the composition of the moon and whose experiments will explore ways of using the available lunar material, say, purifying lunar ice and turning it into water for human use. Hey, if we can get water, we can do a lot of things with water. Drinking. They can use it to experiment with growing plants for food. Now, if we were to grow plants on the moon, wouldn't we have to bring the soil and the nutrients, though? Because in order for your food to grow, your soil has to have nutrients, right? But I, I actually think when we were talking in one of the terraforming videos that they had said that there was a way for us, and I forgot the method, but there was a way for us to basically jumpstart that nutrient process. So is that something that we could scale back significantly because we don't have to do a whole planet, we just have to do a few greenhouses. Is that something that we could replicate at a smaller scale here so that way it is actually self-sufficient? That'd be pretty cool. Hydrogen fuel cells will store power through the long night, extending astronaut stays. And most importantly, it can be split into hydrogen and oxygen. Rocket fuel. Mm. And, you know, oxygen, and breathing. From the moon and putting it into orbit, the moon base will supply an orbital depot where scientific missions to Mars and the outer solar system can refuel. Mm. Compared to the Earth, it's much easier and cheaper to get things off the moon into orbit. Yeah. Colonizing Mars may mean starting from the moon. But this isn't a true colony. Not yet. The base will be abandoned if funding stops. If we want our That'd be so sad. Third phase into a true colony, it must become self-sufficient. Yes. Supporting itself via exports to Earth. Yep. Let's do it. Come on. Now, private contractors arrive, looking to get rich off lunar resources and support services. If it's cheaper to produce rocket fuel in space, what else can they get rich on? Yeah. They could extract precious metals, abundant in impact craters and other raw materials from the lunar regolith. I don't know that producing rocket fuel would be cheaper on the moon, right? Let me rephrase that. It's going to be cheaper to produce rocket fuel for use of leaving the moon on the moon. Because bringing extra rocket fuel up from Earth is very expensive. But it wouldn't be cheaper in the sense of cheaper to do it on the moon is compared to doing it on earth you're not going to make rocket fuel on the moon and export it to earth what kind of resources are on the moon are there rare and valuable resources maybe they're a little bit more abundant there than they are here or a little more easy to get to one promising possibility is the mining of helium-3 an isotope that could one day be used in nuclear oh. reactors, something the Chinese lunar exploration program is currently looking into. That's pretty cool. Future colonists may export helium-3 back to Earth, providing us with cheap and clean fusion energy. Asteroids could be pulled into the moon's orbit and mined. That would be a lot more efficient. Earth, the colony is fully in its third phase, self-sufficient and economically productive. Mm -hmm. Our base will begin using lunar material in its construction projects if it's to continue growing. Fortunately, lunar soil has all the necessary ingredients to make concrete. Really? Robotic mining rigs can sift the lunar dust for organic molecules. What's that? Concrete is what? Lime? I know lime is a main ingredient of concrete. Used to build huge structures way too massive to be brought from Earth. 
while advances in 3D printing will make it possible to produce almost everything else the crews need. 3D printing is pretty cool. I have a 3D printer. It's hard to say when exactly. And I just have a cheap one. Sustaining. And it's really awesome. Growth is gradual. Experiments are replaced by industry, and the population steadily reaches the hundreds, encompassing more than just scientists. Yeah. Engineers, pilots, and contractors representing countries and corporations will be present. Mm -hmm. Two of these people will make a breakthrough. Not scientific, but social. They will have the first extraterrestrial well, child. To be fair, that's pretty scientific as well, isn't it? Because what are the effects of developing in the womb in low gravity? What are the effects of being born in low gravity? How does that birth go? What, what are the effects of aging and your body developing and your mind developing in low gravity? I think that there's a lot of scientific value there. I think there's also a lot of unknowns there, too, that could be potentially risky. Our bodies weren't meant for that. They were meant for where we're at now. So social, yes, but also scientific. Throughout history, the birth of the first child was celebrated as a moment where the seed of a colony finally and irreversibly took root. Here, it means that the moon is not just a place for scientists and engineers to work, it's a place for people to live, to raise a family. Come on, we can do it! Once this this idea actually excites me a lot. Building more habitats and schools and farms and all the things needed to support the growing population. As our colony grows, all kinds of new technologies will be invented to sustain it. Mm -hmm. They might develop crops that efficiently recycle carbon dioxide or that grow with very little water. Yeah. They might find ways to recycle and reuse 100% of their waste, technologies that are extremely valuable for Earth. That would be almost necessary. Space elevator in the solar system. With a space elevator, spacecraft, astronauts... What are we going to do, just bury it in landfills like we do here? ...lunar orbit without needing to use rockets at all. The moon may become a hub for economic activity on a scale that's hard to imagine right now. It's hard to say who will own the colony at this point. Will the first person born on the moon take the national identity of their parents, or will a new generation melt together into a new lunar society? I think eventually it will grow to the point where it's going to want to be independent from the Earth colonies, or the Earth countries, rather. We see it time and time again in history where the colonies outgrew the rule of the originator. And I, I honestly don't think that the moon would be any different. Now, granted, I think it would take quite a long time. I mean, we're talking probably one to 200 years, if not more, before that were to happen. But especially with the key role, the economic role that the moon would have, if all of this is true, and the innovations that it would drive, it seems like it, and it, be, well, and it being self-sufficient too, you know, that's a big one. It seems like it would be in their best interest eventually to become independent and profit off of what they're selling and shipping to Earth. And when existing treaties that bar any nation from owning the moon are inevitably rewritten, will the colonists be given a say? Will they declare independence from the Earth? I think that's inevitable. It happens, the moon is a perfect sandbox to learn how to colonize the solar system, the perfect project to unify nations, and the only way to guarantee our survival as a species should something tragic happen on Earth. Yep, that's exactly what I said. To colonize the Milky Way, we'll have to start somewhere. So why not start there? Why not start now? Yeah, let's do it. While I'm Out of all the things that my tax money goes towards, I would not mind it going towards funding settlement on the moon. It's kind of crazy that they did all of this with the technology that's available to us today, pretty much, more or less. Like I said a few times throughout, I am all for this. Let's do it. I mean, I think it is in our future. 100%, unless we destroy ourselves before it can happen. But it is in our future to expand and to colonize other celestial bodies. The moon is the obvious first step. Then maybe Mars, then maybe Venus. You know, maybe more after that. The moon is right there. We've sent people there before. We've got those people back. We know we can do it. It's that first step of actually pulling the trigger 
allocating the funds, getting people signed up for it, those types of things, that's the hardest part. I have a sneaking suspicion that once that eventually happens and we're serious about it, like, you know, not just, oh yeah, we'll do that one day. But once it's actually funded, that initial first settlement, I think it's going to explode from there. It's going to take off like crazy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to say something, leave a comment. I love interacting with you guys. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.